Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how you can paint the Studio Ghibli scene with watercolors. I'm using Arches watercolor paper. You can use any watercolor paper that you have at home. And I'm using my custom watercolor palette. So a lot of different brands are in there. And I also used some washi tape to tape off the edges. And at first I wanted to do a landscape format, but then I changed my mind so you can see that I taped the right part off and for this video I only used the right part. I started sketching and adjusted my lines so that they were the way that I wanted them to and just very messily mapped out where I wanted everything to go with my pencil. Then I erased all of the lines that I didn't need anymore and then I used a kneaded eraser to lighten up all of the lines so we can't see them through the watercolors. Then I used my favorite watercolor, just at least one of my favorite colors, which is sap green. And this one is a Daniel Smith sap green color, but you can use most brands will probably have a sap green. And usually it looks pretty much the same, at least if it is a good brand, it will look pretty much like this. And now here I'm using an indigo blue color, so a very dark blue color that is probably a little bit towards the green side. So I used that for the darker spaces. And then for the water here, I used a phalo blue. You can use all kinds of colors. I'm just trying to name them a little bit so you have an easier time if you want to recreate it and have the colors. Here I'm using a light blue color. This one was from the Prima Pastel Dreams set and I'm using that for the sky. You can just use any brighter blue tone here. And again, with the indigo, I went back in and made it even darker. I'm pretty sure it's an indigo color. I'm not 100% sure, but I love this color. It's a Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor and I have so many different brands in my set. You can see that I started to really map out everything and try to look up the reference and copy it, but not be too rigid about it because that's a lesson that I've learned in the past, not to be too rigid when copying these scenes because then it sucks out all of the fun. So if you recreate it, use the general idea, the general theme. Don't force yourself to copy each and every stroke because that's gonna suck the fun out of it. And I'm just coloring in everything and using different green tones depending on how light or dark everything is and this is just the first layer so I made sure that I'm not going too dark especially with watercolors you can only go from light to dark and not from dark to light unless you're adding gouache or something and I'm well aware that this video is pretty quick so if you want a more long format step-by-step -step tutorial I really recommend checking out my landscape gouache mini course it's not that expensive and it is just one painting so you'll be done with the mini course fairly quickly but you will learn how to recreate this painting and feel a lot more confident with creating a landscape painting I will leave the link in the description box below for you so you can check it out so now I'm using this tan color for the pathway and again just using a very light tone and I can go in later and add more colors. It's always easier to start off with very light tones and watercolors they usually dry a little bit lighter so it's gonna be even more of a lighter tone after it dries, but that's okay because you can always go back in and add more depth, more shadows, more details later on. So that's how I feel most comfortable with watercolors to just really take it layer by layer and build it up very slowly. 
and you can see that I started to add in more of the shadows now with the bushes in the background. I even started adding a little bit of detail in the foreground leaves and just filling everything up. At this point, honestly, it felt a little bit like a coloring page. I was just looking at the reference, checking where all of the colors were, trying to let go of the pressure and not make it completely perfect. Just have fun with this. This is the most important thing. Even if your picture doesn't look exactly as a reference, really this is a skill to learn to really trust in yourself and focus more on the process and the enjoyment of it rather than on the end result. So you can see I'm adding in more and more shadows, really going in over and over again. I'm mostly letting everything dry and then doing a wet on dry technique. And sometimes I'm using a wet on wet technique, but mostly the areas have dried before I go back into it. So you can see now I'm using the really dark tones. This is pretty much black here and I just wanted the darkest tones to be black. So we really have a lot of contrast here. I know a lot of people don't like to use black with watercolors, but honestly, I think it adds the most contrast. So why not use it? I also darkened up the water in the background a little bit because because I wanted more contrast with the bushes. And now I'm painting the shadows on our pathway. These are stairs. So I made sure that the steps have the shadows so you can really see that these are stairs. And I also made sure that I only paint in areas that where the area next to it has already dried. So it doesn't bleed into each other. That's why I did the rest of the stairs when everything had dried. So it kind of went back and forth here a little bit as well. That's always a good idea with watercolors. Now everything with the pathway is drying and I'm moving on to the background again. I decided to darken up this area here to give it more shadow, more contrast and to make the branches in front of it pop a little bit more and also then add more shadows to everything else and back to the pathway I'm adding in those other parts because now everything has dried and it doesn't weirdly bleed together and we can really keep a very good and um sharp look it's not completely black together and yeah i'm adding in more shadows yet again with all of the plants and i'm just making sure that every plant has the accurate shadows and then i'm doing the same thing with the pathway adding in even more you can see here i added in more shadows from the plants like the plants are casting a shadow onto the path. I think that looks really cool and that adds a lot of dimension to it and makes it pop even more. And I just refined all of my shadows. So I would really recommend doing this and going in over and over again. And you can see now I'm using white gouache just for the finishing touches and everything that is a little bit more opaque. If you want your colors to be fully opaque, I recommend going with gouache and not with white gouache blended with watercolors because of course if you're using pure gouache it's going to be much more opaque than watercolors blended with a little bit of white gouache but here I didn't have to use a fully opaque color because I didn't need it I didn't feel like the painting needed it. I didn't want to add too much gouache to it because it is supposed to be a watercolor painting this time. And so you can see I mostly used watercolor with a little bit of gouache in the end. So I really recommend getting a white tube of gouache if you don't have any gouache at home because it really helps with watercolor paintings to add a little bit of finishing touches. And then we're already done. I'm removing the tape and I also removed it from this paper block obviously and I cut it out 
And in the end, I decided to glue it into one of my journals. So uh, here is the finished painting. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to check out my course linked in the description box below. And I hope I can see you again next time. Goodbye. Thank you.